My, oh my, have you ever seen such a beautiful sight? It's the two top of the line ZMF open back dynamic drive headphones. On the left, the the old man, the established <laughs> contender, the venerable Verite Open. On the right, the newcomer, um, the Atrium. Uh, also, like I said, both open back, both beautiful wood cups, lots of styles to choose from, both leather pads, um, you know, lots of options there as well. Uh, both have removable uh, mini XLR uh, cables, lots of options to choose from there. Uh, both 300 uh, ohm impedance, both around 96 to 97 dB, uh, similar weights depending on your wood. So a lot of similarities, but a lot of sonic differences. Is one better? Uh, are they just different? Um, that's going to depend on you. I will, I will tell you the differences and then you can decide what sounds right for you. Uh, I think they're both fantastic. So spoiler alert right off the bat. They're both great. No out and out like tromping from one or the other here. Testing methodology per usual. A couple of sources, handful of amps, some different cabling, different pads um, over some time. So I could try to like get to know what I was hearing in the headphones characteristics versus the the setup and the chain or my mood, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think, I, I think I've gotten to a place where I have a pretty firm point of view on each of these and, and sort of what I think are unique. So everything I'm gonna say is in compared to the other one, not in comparison to all headphones, just in comparison to the other one here. Um, so the Verite Open. This headphone is more forward, it's crisper, it's sharper, it's, it's mids come forward, they're just, they're more textured, more immediately textured. There's there's an immediacy in general to this headphone. Um, it's it's intimate and it's immediate and it's in your face. It 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 will grab you. Um, like switching back and forth between the two. This is the slap in the face, the strong cup of coffee. Uh, you step, you take one step closer to the stage at the rock concert when you put these on. Um, it's more sort of palpable, more immediately palpable. And the detail and the texture are just like right there at eye level. You just reach out and grab them. Um, and in that, it is for me more fatiguing. Um, but, you know, drums are tight and snappy. And, you know, it's a thinner, it's it's like a crisper. It's it's maybe a little more hollow of a presentation. Um, but it's it's passionate and it's got drive and it's convincing. You will not win an argument with these headphones. They will win. <laughs> um, I, I think moving back from the atrium to these the, the the presentation feels a little flatter a little more two-dimensional maybe i've spent a bunch of time with the verite closed in the past and i loved them and a lot of the characteristics are similar but to me i think i might like these better um the base may be the question there but like i i i, I don't have the verite closed anymore so i can't a b them but i from my memory these these spoke to my soul a little bit a little bit more in some ways um, and I, I really liked the Verite Close as well. Uh, I think actually doing this video will mark me having reviewed, as of circa summer 2022, every ZMF headphone currently in production. So we'll see how long that lasts, but huzzah! All right, let's move over to the Atrium. And remember, comments here are in comparison to the Verite Open, not in comparison to headphones in general. Uh, this headphone what you immediately notice when you put it on is how atmospheric it is. It has this dimensionality. It's almost like it's got two layers of presentation. Um, it's kind of hard to explain if maybe if somebody's heard this can say something in the comments to do a better job of that, but it is, it does have this like delay in it or it's like being in a really big venue. I don't know. It's like the scale of, of the presentation is really interesting and listening to um like swimming trees from uh, glass museum there's these cool little twinkly bits and they just kind of like dancing around swirling around your head um it's a it's like very experiential um at the same time it it it, it has a naturalness to it it has an ease it it feels kind of more human more lifelike more believable in some ways it's like sort of sitting down on a great leather sofa in an amazing listening room and just like sinking into the track uh, and you can do that you can sort of lose yourself in your thoughts while you're listening and the music's there and it's influencing you but you it's not like always like forcing you back into attention um, which is not to say that's boring not at all um, but it's darker it's smoother 
if you go back and forth, you might go, oh, this headphone feels like a little veiled compared to the VL. And I, I don't think it is. It just reveals itself in more nuanced, subtle ways. Um, it's also got a certain physicality to it. Um, the way the bass feels sort of substantial and palpable and the way kick drums hit and the way air is moving around inside these cups, it's, it, it, it does have a sort of a physicality to you, but it's not it definitely doesn't tire me out like some like really physical headphones I've listened to where it feels like your eardrums getting banged on, especially when you're having seasonal allergies. Um, there's certain elements of timbre that I did really prefer on these over the um, Verite Open. Trumpet is a great example. Um, like in a lot of classic jazz, like when the trumpet comes in, sometimes it feels like a little forced on the Verite Open, but on the atrium it just felt so true and natural and and lovely um even though they're like only off by like one db of efficiency these take a little more to drive like i had to turn them up a little more every time i'd switch and before they'd kind of like snap in and, and come alive um let's talk through a couple of sort of test tracks and and what what i heard differently between these so uh yoshi hirakawa's bubbles like super well-known audiophile nerd out track on the verite uh, tack like a tack sharp photo just everything in focus tons of detail and texture but like not a lot of depth very sort of flat in their presentation where on the atrium you're just getting this super spatial sort of room vibe a real just like a real experience um but a little softer a little less focus if we're doing the photo analogy still it's a little more bokeh <laughs> um on, you know, well-known classic rock song, Yes is Roundabout, which is just a very over-the-top, very dramatic song. Very tight open, just grips you so tight, so exciting. Everything is crisp and just hitting so hard. It's just, it's fun. Super, super fun. Uh, on the atrium, uh, there were things that you pick up on that you didn't hear on the VO. Like, so... Um, there's like like resonance of the guitar strings, like their decay and stuff was just more nuanced. There's more there. Um, like I said, so atmospheric, it sort of felt like you were like watching like dust particles, like with light streaming in through the window as you're sitting in the recording studio. But ultimately, a little soft probably for my taste, a little organic probably for that song. Um, again, by comparison, back to back listening not something you normally do um david grissom anniversary waltz vo again tight snappy composed structured um atrium like initially when i'd switch it'd be like oh this is like a little chaotic you know and there's there might be like multiple stringed instruments like multiple guitars and a fiddle and stuff kind of very tightly layered um and the players are like really good so it's like very in sync but it almost felt like a little out of sync at first when i put these on but i think it's just there's more like spatial information and um as that was like surfacing and like again my brain just had to kind of like rewire itself a little bit but then i really started to like get some extra nuance to the playing that made the performance feel more real kind of more alive in some ways um all right conclusion time what do we say well the VO is definitely the more energetic, the sharper, the more tightly defined, the brighter. It's just an in intense sort of listening experience. Um, it's got this immediacy to engage you. It just grips you right off the bat. It's just an undema undeniable wow moment. The the atrium um, is a little sleepier, you know. Like I said, it's it's more the uh, the atmosphere of it, the space of it that you notice right away. And then it takes you a little longer to sort of pull out the detail that it wants to reveal to you. Um, you know, I, I sort of like, if you look at these two, just thinking about their aesthetics and thinking about their presentation, it's sort of like, is, is this the, the more mature, the wiser, older ZMF's point of view? And this is the like younger, brasher, more intense ZMF point of view. I don't know, but there's there's something there, and it's not to say that these are outdated or outmoded or wrong or less sophisticated. Uh, it's just that the VO offers 
something new, I think from, I mean, the uh, atrium offers something new in terms of perspective from ZMF that I, I really respond to. Um, as with anything, pairing makes a huge difference in terms of synergies. Uh, I, you know, if, if I already had an amp, this might influence which way I would go. <laughs> if I had an amp that I love that had certain characteristics might influence which way. If I'm thinking about building a system around one of these, I definitely think carefully about that. So with the VO, I think you want something that is a little smoother, introduces a bit more space, a bit more air, um, and has a little bit more um, sort of warmth to it. Whereas I think with the atrium, you're going to want something that's a little tighter, has kind of more acceleration and velocity to stuff, just kind of like can can give it that extra push it needs um, and, and, and that extra crispness that it really benefits from um, to, to sort of have a complete listening experience. Impedance matching is hugely important, as always, and these are 300 ohm headphones, so that's something to be thoughtful about when I have uh, an amp that's got a bunch of taps on it and I can play with that a bit. For the Verite, it was kind of okay between 30, 100, or you know, 300-ish, kind of high Z. For the Atrium, it was significantly better at high Z than it was uh, with lower impedance, so something to pay attention to. Which one would I have? I don't know. <laughs> um, there's something so enjoyable when you put these on and they just grab you and they give you that crisp textural hit. It's really compelling. I, I would miss that if I didn't have if you know if, if if I didn't have it as my only headphone. Um, these though I can spend a lot of time with and they continue to reveal more to me and have like that naturalness that makes them great for really long listening sessions. Um, so yeah, I guess if I could only have one, I would probably be the Atrium because they're just a little more livable with. But if I had more than one headphone in my collection, I think the Verite has more of, not more of a point of view. It's just that that intense intimacy and yeah, the, I don't know. All right, I'm going to end it with an I don't know. So thanks for sticking around. Until next time, this is Seincraft, signing out.